In this very short video, we're going to determine the variation of the entropy with temperature. Uh, this video will be useful when we examine uh, the dependence of entropy on the conditions, because temperature is one of the conditions that we can easily control in a laboratory setting. All right, so let's recall here what the thermodynamic definition of entropy is. Right, our thermodynamic definition is that uh, a change in entropy is equal to uh, the reversible heat, reversible energy transfer as heat uh, divided over the temperature. Now, the point of this video is to examine how the change in entropy changes with, uh, uh, or the, how the entropy changes with temperature. So the idea is that this energy transfer as heat uh, takes place when we're changing the temperature. So that will be a heating or a cooling process. And we know from our work well, with the first law, that the way that we understand uh, the energy transfer as heat in a heating or cooling process is simply uh, the relationship of our the, the product of the heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature. So this sets up a, a very nice way to uh, determine how the entropy changes with temperature because now we can simply um, solve for that or, or replace this uh, heat capacity change in temperature over temperature, okay, to actually find out what the variation of the entropy with temperature is going to be, right? So solving for uh, differential of entropy over differential of T, what we have is that this is equal to uh, the heat capacity divided over the temperature. Okay. In this particular video, we're not worrying about whether this is a, a molar substance or a substance that doesn't have any more mass. But if we, this was a pure substance, say CO2 or water or ethanol, then we would use your heat capacities uh, per mole, and then you would just simply need, need to multiply by, by the number of moles. Okay, but again, in this video we're just doing some pencil and paper, uh, pencil and paper derivation of how the entropy changes with temperature. Okay, so uh, that's actually how it does, but uh, notice that generally we're gonna have a couple of ways to uh, transfer energy as heat so that that system becomes uh, hotter or cooler. We can do that at constant volume, or we can do that at constant pressure. And what that means is that uh, your heat capacity will actually be sensitive to the conditions under which you're doing this uh, heating or cooling, constant pressure or constant volume. So uh, to do that, if we're using, uh, or to wrap up uh, here, what we can say is that, well, uh, if you're doing this at constant pressure, then the idea is that the way that the entropy changes with temperature, if you hold the pressure constant, that is simply uh, the heat capacity at constant pressure divided over the temperature. But then, uh, if you were to do this in, a, say, something like a bump calorimeter, where you're using here constant volume, then the idea is that uh, your variation of the entropy with the temperature at constant volume would be just the heat capacity at constant volume divided over the temperature. Okay, so these are very simple uh, ways to understand uh, the dependence of the entropy with the temperature. What we actually see is that, well, these numbers will always be positive, right? So every time that you add energy as heat to a system and the system elevates its temperature, then the entropy of the system increases. That's kind of a, a big overarching point uh, that we're doing. Now, the way that the entropy increases is going to depend on the temperature and also on whether you're doing this process at heat cap uh, constant pressure or constant volume. Okay, so in this video we have seen the variation of the entropy with temperature at either constant pressure and constant volume, and this will be useful in the future once we examine how, once we uh, turn our attention to examining how the entropy changes with the conditions.